Hey, Jared. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm well. Congrats. How are you? Thank you. Wanted to ask you uh, the body shots. Um, we're out altitude. It's like 4,200 and something feet. Was that something that you wanted to invest in early? Because it seemed like that was really sapping his energy. Yeah, I mean, he's like six foot five. I'm like five foot four. Hard to reach his face. His body's like right there. I'm like looking at his belly button. Um, but no, yeah, I always try to dig to the body, uh, especially against the fence like I was doing. Um, I was just worried about the tie clinch. He was getting it, so I, had to, I was like shrugging him off. Um, but yeah, even from distance, I would jab, go to the body, and it looked like it was hurting him, uh, and then I was coming back upstairs. Uh, I thought maybe I was going to get the finish at one point. Uh, it looked like he was really slowing down. Um, but the guy's a veteran, man. He, by MMA math, I mean, he armbarred George St. Pierre in ADCC. So I have a, I have a win over George St. Pierre now. <laughs> and which means I have a win over, like, all the well-to-weight goats, you know? Make sure you tell Danaher that you have a win over GSP. I, Danaher, I'm, I was under Danaher for nine years. I know, years. that's why. Yeah, so he would be like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, no, but, uh, you know, the guy's got wins over some really good guys in the UFC. He was on a seven-fight winning streak, I believe, in the UFC. Obviously, he's gotten older. He was on a losing streak. I think his fight against Grant Dawson, he was beating him until he got knocked out literally in the last second. Uh, so this is a big win for me, I think, you know. Didn't get – they were booing at me. I mean, Lee was running a lot for me. <sighs> you know how the crowd is. They want to see you die in there. Uh, but a big win over a veteran, and back in the win column, I have four out of five fights, you know, I've won. So I think I'm doing all right right now. What are you looking at next? I know that there was some talk about Patty Pimblett possibly. I mean, he called me out after his last fight, I think, right, on whatever with Karen Bryant uh, after his last fight. Um, we've been calling each other out for two, like two years. Nothing malicious. I really like him, actually. I think he's funny. I think he's great for the sport. Uh you know, he he's a, a character, and I think, you know, he's preaching a good message. And I think between the two of us, uh, especially him with, like, his million followers, uh, <laughs> we can, uh, you know, raise a lot of awareness for mental health. He said, like, his best friend had took his life. My best friend, who was actually a pro fighter, took his life a little over a year ago. Uh, but I'm affected by suicide, obviously drug addiction, you know, all sorts of pro – everything has plagued my life. <laughs> So, yeah, I think between me and him, we could, you know, and he's got, like, the whole world behind him. You know, he's got uh, Barstool, Port Dave Portnay. You know, he sold out America. He threw his money at Liverpool. Uh, you know, I'm right here, Dave. You know, I'm from Queens, New York, you know. What the hell? You could have thrown your money at me. But, you know, I think we could all, like, uh, I have some people behind me too, man. I have some people that, will, that would uh, get behind us. Maybe we could create some sort of... <sighs> A, a foundation for mental health or something like that I think would be really cool and we can punch each other in the face at the same time you know I was hoping for Madison Square Garden I don't know if things that I've heard in the last couple of weeks that he might not be able to make that date um, unfortunately um, you know and I can't blame him because I've I've done the things that he does you know gets big between camps nothing against that I I'm always growing in size between camps as well <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I got nothing bad to say about the kid. I like him, and I think it would be it would be a fun fight, and I think uh, we can do a lot together. You know, let's be positive instead of negative. You know, like we could instead of like slapping each other. Uh, you know, we could like raise awareness. You know. Thanks, Jared. No problem. Yeah. Jared, right here. Uh, the broadcast seemed pretty surprised at your opponent's game plan. They were expecting a lot more takedowns in there, and even uh, Daniel Cormier said he, your opponent should be able to, to grapple for 15 minutes straight without getting tired. But he looked visibly tired in there. Were you surprised that he wasn't shooting for the takedowns more? No, no, no. First of all, he's tall. It's hard to get underneath me. He, uh, I mean, he did get have one shot where, you know, we were against the cage, but I got out of it. Um, but. I'm no slouch on the ground either. I've never been out grappled in any fight except against Grant Dawson. And I made mistakes in that fight. I rush it and I know what mistakes I made. I knew the mistakes that I made before I made them. I always preach, don't give up your back. And I did it in that fight, but that's what MMA is. You know, I made a mistake and you know, I've learned from it. And the fight against that, I fought Joe Selecki, a kid's a black belt stud, you know. But I've been doing jiu-jitsu since I'm 17. You know, I'm 33 now. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen my other fights. I, beat people's asses on the ground. So, I mean, I don't know. They also seem to think that you're having trouble getting in 
inside his reach because when you would try to uh, close the distance, he would throw that knee up the middle. Was that the case, or were you just, were you just trying to figure it out in there? I mean, I was trying to figure it out. I didn't want to get caught. He does a really good step to the side and throws his right hand. He's knocked out a couple people that knocked out Stevie Ray with it. I think he knocked out Kevin Lee with it. So, I mean, you know, and the guy's throwing knees. So the right hand's coming, and you're coming down and low, and he's throwing that knee up the middle, which hit me a couple times. Uh, I'm in shape right now, so, you know, I felt it. And he was throwing – the first kick he threw – Landed right on my liver. His toe was right on my liver. Huh? And I'm like, all right, this is going to be a fun night. You know, but he slowed down fast. Luckily, we're in Salt Lake City. I think that might have helped me a little bit. <laughs> uh, but, dude, I'm in great shape right now. So, I mean, I knew that when I went to the body, it was going to hurt him, and that's and it worked, it worked out. Jared over here, just wondering, what do you think of Salt Lake City fighting, the environment? Uh, first time UFC's ever been here. What do you think? It's beautiful. I've snowboarded here before uh, in Park City, Utah. Uh, beautiful state. Um, this is my first time here in the summer. Gorgeous place, little city. Uh, you know, I'm from New York, so I'm used to large city life. I'm used to the cold. <laughs> I'm used to the grime and dirt. Uh, but yeah, beautiful city. We went hiking. We got lost for like five hours on Monday. I was like, what are we doing? Literally, we got lost. I'm like, why are we here right now? We walked into a trail for like two and a half hours, and I'm like, yo, I got a fight on Saturday, and we we're going up a hill with rocks. I was slipping. I almost died. My coach Jason's wearing Vans with no socks on. And it's like getting dark. I'm, and then finally someone comes and they're like, uh, we're like, how much longer? They're like, yeah, like another hour and a half to get to where the, the lake. I'm like, we got to turn around. So we had to walk two and a half hours out. But it was gorgeous. Uh, I love the mountains. So uh, beautiful place. How does it affect your fighting or does it do anything for you? Like but, the elevation of Salt Lake City? No, I don't think it did anything. I was doing sprints up, up, high in the mountains on uh, Monday. Uh, I swim nonstop. I, I slept in an altitude tent for, I spent like 10 Gs on an altitude chamber that goes over my bed. Uh, I slept at 10,000 feet for the last eight weeks. Uh, I don't know if it was placebo or not. <laughs> I hope it's not because I spent 10 grand on it. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think it worked because in practice too, like, you know, at first you can't tell because everyone's fresh. And then like third, fourth, fifth, sixth rounds in the gym, I'm just, I'm going, and, my, and people are slowing down. And I'm like, all right, this thing works. Plus, I do tons of cardio, so. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, um, right here. My brother. Yes. Uh, at some point, when he tried to take you down the first time, looks like you put your hand over the bed in the fence. Is that accurate or not? Did I grab the fence? Yep. Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I got a warning. And yeah. Herb Dean was like, yo, you grabbed the fence again. I'm taking an appointment. And I'm like, all right, cool. I got my warning. I'll, I'll, uh, you know, since I met, he was grabbing my glove at one point. So now we're even. Uh, and that's it. You know, it was reaction. Oh. <laughs> and that's what happened, man. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I wasn't trying to cheat. Yeah. I think I would have got up anyways, but. But part yeah. of the dynamic of the fight. Yeah, I mean, it's just natural, man. How about that kid? He threw the flying knee on the kid on the floor. Yep. Yeah. So it was natural. Uh, something else, he seems pretty tired throughout yeah. the fire, even when, when he was like grabbing your mm -hmm. leg, why you didn't finish the guy at that point? I was punching him in the head like 20, I was just nonstop, I mean, what else could I have done? You know? And uh, I don't know what else I could have done. <laughs> I punched him in the back of the head like 20 times. Yeah. So I think uh, Herb was about to stop it and then he started moving. And there was 10 seconds left in the round. So I mean, whatever, you know, I tried, I tried. You know, it's harder in the, when you're in there. It's a lot harder than it looks from the outside. People are like, "Why didn't you just knock him out?" And I'm like, "Well, if I could have just knocked him out every time I got in there, I would have, and I would be the best fighter in the world." Right. But it doesn't it doesn't work that way. All right, thank you. <laughs> no problem, bro. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jared. Yo. Uh, congrats on the win, man. Thank uh, you, brother. Good to be here for that. Uh, what's next? Uh, we're looking for Madison Square Garden. Man, I'm dying to fight there. Maybe get some warm ups at Henzo Gracie. Man, I trained at Henzo's for like nine years, four four blocks away from. I used to walk past Madison Square Garden every day. I literally have shot. I used to shoot dope in a bathroom right next to Madison Square Garden consistently. Like I would come off the subway, I would shoot some dope, and I'd go in the, into Henzo's and I'd roll, and that's what I did, man. And I would. I that that's my city. That's why your cardio was so good. That's it, man. A little heroin. That's what's in my water between rounds. Coaches, I go, a little heroin, or I'm like, eh, not too much. I don't want to fall asleep in there. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't notice anything though. You're just like, yeah, I'm here, fighting, and that's it. The rounds go by fast. 
you you just you just got to win over one of the the great uh jiu jitsu guys in in, in brazil mm -hmm. how, how does it feel and uh besides patty uh anyone else you have in mind <laughs> man i don't i don't look past anyone yeah I, patty was on my mind because you know in the you, see, you hear him he called me out okay so now it's on my mind because i you know but you know getting ready for this fight i'm like all right stop thinking about patty and what's in the future i gotta get past leo santos first you know so i haven't thought about anyone else and you know i i think i'm i think everyone knows i'll fight anyone because i have anyone they put in front of me i always say yes to i've never said no so we'll see what happens if patty can't make Madison Square Garden, whatever. Maybe I'll fight him. Maybe I could fight him later. He said December, I think, that he would be able to make December. I know he doesn't also want to fight New York because of taxes. And you know what? I don't either, man. I sp I paid. You know how much money I paid to New York living there in my life. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I would fight in Vegas too. You know, I think that's what he said, right? December, Vegas, big card, main event, or main card, whatever they call it. What do they call it? Main card, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Coach. Flash, congrats on the big win. You just touched on um, going back how long you've been in MMA is for. What's the secret to the success and how do you stay <laughs> relative and healthy and all that good stuff? Uh, what's the secret to success? I don't know. Your success. My success? Shit. I'm just too stupid to know when to stop, I think. No, I'm joking. Um, I just try to stay consistent and have faith and work hard, man. That's literally – I'm not a – I'm not tall, I'm not long, I'm not super fast. They call me Flash, I don't know why. I'm not fast, really. Uh, I just have to work really hard, and that's what I do. I don't miss practices. I don't skip, I don't half, I don't cut corners. I do, I, try, I always am open-minded. I don't say, ah, oh, that guy doesn't know where he's talking. I learn, I try to learn every day and be a student every day, you know? And I just, I just I'm try I try to get better at everything every day spiritually mentally physically, and I, and I watch I watch I look and I listen to my coaches and and that's I feel better now than I ever did. Thank you, sir. And lastly, for me, how important is it to uh, use your platform to speak about certain topics that maybe not too many fighters want to touch on, but you're gonna just go full throttle and speak about depression, anxiety, whatever issues that people have, just whether they're fighters or not. Uh, it's only the only reason like. I, all right, so before, you know, on my interview with MMA Junkie, I was like, MMA, I said MMA doesn't do anything for me in the, in the long, like, fulfillment-wise. Like, I love UFC. I love fighting in the UFC. I love what I've been given. I love to be able to perform for the fans. I love MMA. It's my passion. I love competing. I love training. And thank you to this whole company for everything they've given me. I make a living doing it. I'm doing well. And, uh... But people, it went over a lot of people's heads. I don't know, I guess they're like, maybe it's a bunch of kids that were responding to me on on the interview, but um, they were like, well, why don't you just quit fighting? You can go do something else. And I'm like, this doesn't, I'm gonna fight, I won tonight, I'm gonna go home in three days, I'm gonna say, all right, now what the fuck do I do? What do I do now? I'm pit I got nothing to work towards, and then I'm gonna be texting my manager, hey, get me another fight, and he's gonna be like, dude, you just fought three days ago. Relax, we'll figure it out, you know? It doesn't give me, that's why you see these champions, they're depressed after, these athletes, they blow all their cash, they're de de uh, degenerate gamblers, they turn into drug addicts, they get depressed, they end up killing themselves. Uh, because you can't fill the void you're looking to fill with fighting, or with football, or with money, or cars, or anything like that, so. The only thing that makes me happy is helping people and raising awareness. And then, like, when someone tells me, like, you actually saved my life, and I have a lot of people that tell me that, that's what makes me happy forever. And I can go home and say, wow, I actually, like, did something, you know? I actually helped someone. Uh, so when I say that MMA doesn't <laughs> do anything for me, it's just it doesn't give me full li lifetime fulfillment. And I'm sure you guys understand that, right? Or am I just, like, demented? Okay, cool. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.